Right, here we go again, just as I started a few minutes ago, the doctor rang to see how Julie is, so, and I want to say thank everybody for the kind thoughts and prayers and cards and flowers and everything else for Julie. It really, well, it boosts us up no end, does it? It's a good, it's a good boost, that's all I can say. Um, and I hope everybody's all right. Thursday morning, Cornishman Day again, here we go. Yo, don't forget to put the clocks back on Saturday. We've got the lighter mornings and darker evenings, but it don't matter. It don't matter. It'll come round. It'll be all right. As long as everybody's staying safe. Now, birthdays. <clears throat> Andy Gill is today. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you, boy. Now, tomorrow is Des Masters, the young man tomorrow, Des is. Happy birthday tomorrow to you, Des, my great friend. Uh, Vaughan Bajan is his birthday tomorrow. Having a lovely day, Vaughan. Jill, Jill Peacock is her birthday tomorrow. And then uh, we got Sharon Sullivan is on Saturday and a great friend of mine from my Queen's Flight days, Chris Harrison, is his birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to everybody for tomorrow. Now, one other little thing is <clears throat> I've been asked to, well, the poppy appeal starts and we've got Josephine Powell. Is, I mean, all fair credit, credit to her. She's taken this on. A big thing to do. But we're down Asda from Saturday, this Saturday, for, well, two weeks, really. Um, there's a, a 10 till 12 shift. 12 till 2 and 2 to 4 down Asda to meet lots of people I've been chatting. She, you know, and people have paid the um, ultimate price. Um, that's why they, we remember them with the poppy appeal. And I just wondered, is there anybody out there that could help us just with a few shifts? Um, you know, I'm, I make myself available for next week for a few shifts. Anyhow, now, if you want to speak with Josephine, it's Hale 75. 2169. Um, she was delighted. We just need a, just a few people out to cover us for. Uh, we're, I think I, we're doing as to, as far as I know. All right. So, uh, and if somebody want to ring me, you can. It's mine seven five six seven nine three. I'm not organising it, but I'm supporting Josephine Powell because she's doing a cracking job. All right. So that's that. Now this one's called "Tis Some Awful." Come on, James Henry, aren't you out of bed yet? No, it isn't daylight yet. Yes, it is. Windows is all snot up. Get out or you'll be like the man who stayed in bed for two days and two nights because every time he woke up, it was dark. Who's down in the kitchen? Oh, father, it's just too bad for him to go work. Up jumped Richard Henry. How didn't he call me for? He asked as he rushed downstairs, opened the door and looked out. Old woman, old woman up the sky, shaking her feathers out of her tie. I'll shake thee if you don't shut the door, said Feather. Look at what you've done. For the wind had blown out the old oil lamp, and he had to lighten again. Have your breakfast, boy. I don't want eight, I said Richard. Nay, I won't make a snowman. I can't wait. You can't You can't make a snow woman, for all I care. Come on. Richard Henry had summoned to eat, put on his cap and overcoat, and was soon out in the snow. First he made a snowball to throw at the cat on the roof. He threw and missed, but caught Feather right in the back of the head. Feather, who was bringing in some wood, dropped it and tried to chest Richard Henry. If I catch you, I'll rub your face in the snow. That snowball might have gone right through my head. Yes, said Mother, who was looking out the doorway. There's nothing to stop him. Feather, you better get a loaf of bread. Have me got enough, asked Feather. Tis brave and deep down the road. I bet tis twelve feet deep. Go on, says Mother. Men do always make the most of things. Put on your thick boots and overcoat and go on. Grumbling, he started off, and in about ten minutes he returned. Where's my pipe? Can't go without that. He was some time before he found it. Richard Henry had stuck it on the snowman's face. Off he started again. He'll be back again for someone, said Mother. See if, see if he don't. She was right. Come back again. I forgot the money, he said. Found some in an old tape hot, and off he went again. When the ice cream man be around day, asked Richard Henry. Oh, plenty of ice outside if you're feeling hot, replied Mother. I got some job, get drop water. I'm afraid I asked Feather last time he broke the tap. Oh, here's Father come. Now, now we'll have a bit dinner. Have you got the bread? No, replied Feather. Woman down shop wanted to know if you wanted a large loaf or a small one, and you didn't tell me. Well, we'll have to eat more, Teddas. They had started dinner when there was a knock on the door, and there stood a woman who lived next door, and holding a large empty pail in her hands. Can he spare me a bu bucket of coal? Oh, I'm a hard as a man, said Feather. But I can't expect you to carry get heavy bucket up this awful weather. You might fall down and break your leg to some slippery. Call again in a week or two. I better leave the bucket here, I suppose. 
I don't know if it is the, the Powell's birthday or no, but I come wishing many happy returns. I thought I'd lost him. Mind the step. I'll said mother. I'll clean up and you have to go down shop again. I want a few things. Better write them down on a piece of paper, suppose. Men's heads are like cracked jugs. When old much. She made out the list, folded it and put it in the table for Feather. To snow again, said Richard Henry. Feather said he can mind the great lizard. What was that? A circus? I don't know, replied Mother. Father was always older than me. Here he is, coming now. I bought a bit of coal and now I'm going down shop. As he put on his hat and tied it down with a piece of bootless. Good job I saved up this get coat. What I used to do fire watching in. He looked around, took up the grocery list, lit his pipe and with it and started off. Richard Henry, you go out and bring in Feather's best hat off the snowman. People see that hat will think tis Sunday. Feather was looking out the window when on comes Billy Jenks. Now Billy Jenks was never very safe upon his legs and was old and fast on the wall. When Billy got by the gate out went his feet and went down Billy. Mother had laugh as she said the righteous shall stand and the ungodly shall fall. And there goes Billy Jinx, basket and all. Billy's motto was, one step at a time, and when you're up, keep up. He was known to preach for an hour and a half, and Mother said she'd never seen him sit down so quick before. Well, well, if it didn't any Janie coming up the garden, just said you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your relations. Open the door, Richard Henry. How oh, I'm so glad to see Aunt Janie. I hope we haven't troubled to bring you me nothing this awful weather, looking at Aunt Janie's basket. No, that's my nitrous. I thought I'd come and stay a bit. I saw. I said nobody can beg a pasty like you. Well, it will be a cold shift for you, Richard Henry. Broke the hot water bottle. You can see the sherds there upon the table. Feathered always say one trouble to follow after another. And now you've come, Mark, remarks Richard Henry. Now, I hope that's all right. Have a nice day and have, we'll have a nice weekend. Take care.